Hey, it's Chrissy at Pinnovate. This tutorial is for our Grow & Co collaboration box. Um, there is a lot of awesome little projects in here for little hands and it's so much fun and you get to display your artwork at the end. So let's go through your kit together. You are going to receive a display garland from Grow & Co. It's an adorable little uh, wooden garland with some twine where you can actually hang it on your wall and display all of your artwork. You're also going to receive a Sharpie, a paintbrush, a little palette of watercolor paints, a whole block of watercolor paper so you can paint to your heart's content. You're going to also receive a uh, carbon transfer paper. So there's one of these, but it can be used multiple times over and over and over. We've provided you with a selection of images that you can start with and trace, but you can keep going after that. The only other things you're going to need would be a cup of water, a paper towel, and some masking tape. So get all of your supplies together and we'll get going. Okay, so for the very first step, I'm gonna teach you how to transfer an image onto your watercolor paper. So grab your block of paper. You're gonna also need your transfer uh, carbon paper. One of the images, so I'll start with this one, as well as some masking tape and a pencil. So grab all of those together and we'll get going. Okay, so this part is quite easy and lots of fun and it's quite rewarding right off the bat. So uh, with your watercolor paper, you're gonna take one of the pieces out of your pad there and you can see on one side it's going to be a little bit more rough and textured and bumpy and the other side is a bit more smooth. So we want the bumpy textured side. So I'm gonna place that bumpy textured side face up. The next thing we are going to do is with your carbon paper, you have a piece, it's gonna be kind of a little bit more cloudy on one side and shiny on the other. I'm going to place the shiny side down, touching it and the kind of cloudy side facing up. Then I'm going to take my image and center that on top. So I'm just stacking everything right now. I'm centering it all together. This is the image I'm going to use. You can pick whichever one you like. And then once that's all lined up, I'm going to take a little bit of my masking tape and just tape down the corners to make sure that none of this moves. Okay, now everything is all taped together. It's nice and secure and I have everything layered like a little cake in there. Now with my pencil, I'm just going to trace every line that I have on here. And what's going to happen is that pressure is going to go through the carbon paper and onto our watercolor paper. So when you're doing this, just keep in mind any pressure is going to go through. So even if I have my fist or my hand on here, uh, if I push hard with my finger, that's also going to transfer through. So we want to do this relatively carefully. And I'm just going to use the tip of my pencil and do the best job I can just to trace out this image that I have. Okay, so I've used my pencil, I've gone over all of the lines, and I'm ready to see how this transfers over. So I'm just going to peel off this tape. I can take off my image. I can take off my carbon paper. And there we have our image traced right over. So you can see I added a little bit of pressure uh, onto my paper above, and that actually went through a little bit. Not a big deal. And again, all my shapes are uh, kind of like a rough shape, but that's okay. This is my own take on what we are doing. So let's get this transferred over and then we're gonna move on. All right, so now that my image is transferred, we are ready to do some painting. So again, you can use any image and you can transfer anything using that carbon paper. And again, that carbon paper can be used multiple, multiple times uh, before it stops working. So here are some awesome techniques for watercolor. So the best thing that we can do is think of you're going to be actually painting with the water first. Okay, so I'm going to dip my brush into my water and I'm going to start, let's do, I'm going to do three lights 
one color. So I'm gonna start painting those first. So what I'm gonna do is with my water on my brush, I'm going to carefully paint this only with the water. I'm keeping all of that water within the area where I want the color to be. So I'm just prepping the paper for where the pigment of that paint is going to go. Okay, so there's one. And then I'll do maybe this one here. Okay, so I'm essentially just painting the area with water first before we add any color to it. And then I'll do this last one over here. So what happens now is I'm gonna paint these guys red. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of water and just touch a little bit of red. I don't need a lot. I can always add more, but I can't take it away. Okay, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of red onto my brush. It's still wet. And I'm gonna go in here. And what's gonna happen is any of that paint color is going to go where that water went already. Okay, so if I keep that water within those lines, it's just going to fill it in and have a nice, soft, subtle look to it. Okay, if you want this darker, you're just going to add a little bit more paint. Okay, you can layer it and make it darker, but again, you can't take the color away once it's there. Now, I'm actually not brushing back and forth because the water's there, I'm actually just kind of touching and tapping and I'm just kind of moving the color where I want it to be, okay? All right, so I'm happy with that light. I'm gonna move on to the next one and same sort of thing. If I touch it, that pigment is going to spread to where all the water already is. All right, so I think I'm set with that for now. I'm going to wash off my brush, make sure it's nice and clean, and then I'm just going to keep moving on to all of the rest of the colors. Again, using water first, and then adding our watercolor paints onto it afterwards, keeping that water within those lines, and then adding the color after. Okay, so I'm almost done my lights, okay? So what's kind of cool with this is when the water evaporates and dries, you're left with the pigment on your paper. So what happens if you accidentally get water where you don't want it? So let's say I come out of here by accident and I spill some water up over here where I don't actually want it and I'm not happy with what's going on here. All I have to do is with my trusty paper towel, I'm just gonna soak that up. Touch it down and it soaks it right up. So if for whatever reason, water gets where you don't want it, or some paint gets where you don't want it, just take your paper towel and soak it right up, okay? So I'm gonna show you what that looks like with paint as well. So again, I'm gonna go in here, put the water just where I want it, Okay, and I go in, add my pigment. Let's say I'm like, oh, I missed, and I accidentally went out of the line there, and I'm making a little bit of a mess. Again, just with my paper towel while it's still wet, I'm just gonna soak that up. Okay, and it acts pretty close to an eraser, okay? So most of it is gone. If I add a little bit more water to it, again, I can soak up a little bit more. Okay, so you can use your paper towel and that water as a bit of an eraser as well. So if you make any mistakes, don't think too, too hard about it. Okay, this is supposed to be fun and awesome. So it's mostly gone. I'm happy with that. Okay, so I'm gonna just finish, finish off this light. 
and then let this dry. So another important thing to remember is when you're painting, because water is going to move around on your paper, you do not want to be painting two areas side by side that are wet. You need to move around your paper and do only areas that are dry next to it. So, for example, once I'm done this guy here, excellent. Okay, so now I wanna go in and I'm going to do all of the bottom of the bulbs, but everything is wet. So I can't do that yet because if the water on the bulb as well as the water on the bottom of the bulb touch each other, they're going to blend together and make a little bit of a muddy looking area. So I have to wait for everything to dry now before I can move on to the next step. All right, so all my bulbs are dry. Uh, and so now I can actually paint beside it because the paper is dry. They're not going to blend and that water isn't going to mix together. So I'm going to make the bottom of my bulbs like a light gray. So I'm going to go in again and just paint that area where I want the color to be. Okay. And then this time with black, I'm only adding the smallest little bit. So remember you can, you can make this uh, like a watered down thinner color. And as you're adding layer after layer of uh, any of the paints, they're just gonna get darker and darker and darker. So you start out light and you can just kind of build from there the shade that you would like. So as you're going along doing your painting, try to keep your water relatively clean. So you can see mine is getting a little bit dirty from washing my brush. Um, all of that pigment in that water will transfer over to your paper. So you might need a couple uh, times to clean out your, your cup or your dish. Uh, so try to just have a nice clean cup um, nearby while you're painting as well. Okay, so I have finished watercolor painting my image and I've allowed it to dry so there's no more uh, wet uh, water anywhere on there. Uh, if you are done at this point, you are done and that is great. If you're happy with your project, that is awesome. But I'm gonna show you a couple other little uh, tidbits or tricks or additions that you can add to your painting to kind of make it pop. So with your Sharpie, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna outline. So everything that I copied over from the carbon paper, I am just going to trace now with the Sharpie. So again, with the Sharpie, this is going to be a little bit wet. So if I'm to hold it in one place too long, that ink is actually going to saturate and spread. So I want to kind of do it in a little bit more of like a quick light uh, drawing as opposed to like a heavy, heavy marker. So I'm just going to go in and draw all of the lines where my carbon pa paper copied over.